This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Uh, this is the second lecture on uh, limited companies. Um, and in the first lecture, we looked at the layout of the um, statement of profit or loss, which, um, if you remember, is just a sort of summarised version of the statement we used to. Uh, in this lecture, I want to start looking at the statement of financial position. And if you turn to uh, section two of the free lecture notes, you have an example there um, of the layout of the step to financial position for a limited company. And as far as you'll see, it looks very much the same as what it was for a sole trader. Certainly assets, exactly the same. We have to split between non-current assets. Here we've got property, plant and equipment and motor vehicles and current assets, inventories, receivables, prefinance, just like we do for a sole trader. Uh, one small thing, and I did mention this um, when we first looked at the statement from our financial position in one of the first lectures, as far as non-current assets are concerned, we are required to disclose uh, the original cost and the accumulated depreciation. However, limited companies normally don't show that detail on the face of the statement. Um, those figures there, 100,000 uh, property, 20,000 motor vehicles, those will be the carrying value, the net book value. So we don't show the detail on the face of the statement, but there will have to be a statement attached, which does show the breakdown does show the cost, the accumulated depreciation for each type of asset, and how they've changed over the year. However, otherwise, assets, no problem. If you look at um, the capital liabilities, um, liabilities, again, just like a sole trader. Non-current liabilities, here they've got 10% loan notes. As usual, their liabilities that are payable in more than 12 months from the date of the statement. Um, here, 20,000, the 10% is the rate of interest that they're paying. And current liabilities, uh, liabilities payable within 12 months, uh, trade and other payables, jumping a bit short term borrowings, overdrafts, um, tax. If there's tax owing, as I mentioned in the last lecture, any tax owing appear as a current liability uh, and we do show that separately. However the big change is the way we show capital. You'll see there capital and reserves and there's where things do look different and we've a bit of explaining to do. Now you'll have to be patient with me because obviously I can't explain everything at once we'll have to look separately at uh, what we mean by uh, share capital and reserves and how they appear there. And so, as I start on it, if you turn over, so I can compare the way we set it out, limited company and sole trader, have a look at example one. Alex is a sole trader and Bertha is a limited company. They both start business with capital of 10,000. Alex, sole trader, he'll be putting in capital of 10,000. Uh, Bertha's a limited company, so there'll be several, several of us, maybe 10 of us each put in 1,000, whatever, but there's capital of 10,000. They both make profits in the first three years of trading. Of those figures there, 5,000, 7,000. So they both make the same profits. Uh, Alex, because he's a sole trader, uh, he'll be taking drawings. Then you've got there drawings, first year 1,000, second year 2,000, third year 3,000. Uh, Bertha, well, a limited company, instead of drawings, the shareholders, the owners, will get dividends. Now, I'll say a lot more about dividends later, but dividends is just like drawings. Drawings is what a sole trader gets out of the business. For a limited company, it's 
dividends. Fine. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to show the capital bit of the statement of financial position. For each of the three years, for each of the two. Now, I'll do them side by side. As far as a sole trader is concerned, which here is Alex, at the end of the first year, how would it appear? Well, the original capital was 10,000. So on the statement of financial position, we show capital 10,000. And if you remember, we add on any profit for the year. And the profit for the first year is 5,000. And we subtract any drawings. Uh, drawings in the first year, a thousand. So I appreciate, I'm just showing the capital part of the statement. You know, you have all your assets, uh, we'll have the liabilities. But as far as capital is concerned, with a sole trader, we show the original 10,000 that was paid in, add on the profit, subtract the drawings, we do show that detail. And there's 14,000 owing at the end of the first year to the owner. Uh, with a limited company, we show it somewhat differently. What is it, Bertha? Uh, first of all, uh, the capital, I don't think any problem here, uh, the capital of 10,000, we call it share capital. Uh, there'll be several people have bought shares in the company. In total, they've paid in capital of 10,000. I'll show you how we actually deal with the issue of shares separately. Uh, but the capital, no problem. We just change its name, share capital. That's easy. However, instead of showing the profit for the year and the dividends separately, as we do for a sole trader, uh, we effectively do separate workings, uh, and we show the net of the two. Here, again, they made profit of five, and they've had dividends of a thousand. Well, we show as one figure the amount of profit that's been kept within the business. And so the profit was five thousand. A thousand's been paid out to the owners as dividend. The remaining 4,000 has been kept or retained in the business. We have retained earnings. And there would have been separate workings. We'll say, ah, the profit was a thousand, uh, sorry, was 5,000. But shareholders took a thousand of that, the dividend. We don't show those workings on the face of the statement. It's just my workings. But 4,000 is retained. And so, of course, at the end of the year, the total owing to the owners is 14,000 in each case. It's just the presentation of it with a limited company, share capital 10,000, the retained or the kept earnings for total 14. Uh, to show you the full picture, let's look at the second year. If it's a sole trader, well, at the end of the first year, the total capital was 14,000. So at the end of the second year, we say the capital brought forward was 14,000. And then we add on the second year's profit and take off the second year's drawings. So the profit in the second year was 7,000. Uh, the drawings in the second year were 2,000. 
And so we're totaling at the end of the second year at 19,000. Uh, for a limited company, um, two things. First of all, the share capital, the original capital paid in, we always leave separately and is unchanged. The share capital remains at 10,000. That will never change unless uh, they issue more shares, but we're going to deal with that later. <coughs> uh, we show as a separate figure the total retained earnings, the total earnings that have been kept within the business. And what is it? From last year, there was already 4,000 that have been kept. This year, there's another 7,000 profit, but some of that profit was taken by shareholders as dividend, the dividend 2,000. And so the total retained earnings now, the four we had plus another five retained this year, a total of 9,000. And so again, the total owing, 19,000. So, sole trader or limited company, the total owing to the owners isn't any different. It's the way we present it. Limited companies, share capital stays at 10,000. Retained earnings is showing the total profits that have been kept in the business. The total profits, uh, not just this year, not just last year. Well, hopefully you've got it by now, but let's just make sure, let's do the third year. Uh, again, uh, with the sole trader, uh, when we come to show it at the uh, end of the third year, we say, ah, well, the capital brought forward at the end of last year, start of this year, was 19,000. And then we add on the third year's profit, uh, 10,000. And subtract the third year's drawings, 3,000. Which means the total capital has now gone up to 26,000. And so there's the total owing uh, to the owner It'll be exactly the same in total for a limited company, but again, the presentation is different. The share capital is always kept separate and is 10,000. The extra OE is all the profits that have ever been kept within the business, the retained earnings. And what's it gone up to now? It was all, all already 9,000. How much extra was retained in the uh, third year? Well, the profit was 10. Uh, the dividends were 3. So an extra 7,000 retained. The total retained, therefore, is now 16,000, the total 26,000. And so, uh, there we are, this retained earnings. Uh, and the retained earnings are the most obvious reason, of course, why from year to year you'll expect shareholders, the owners, to be owed more on the statement of financial position. As you'll see, there are other reasons I'm coming to. But retained earnings is the first example we've had of what we call a reserve. And what a reserve is, it's, I will write this down, but it's 
anything extra owing to the shareholders above the share capital. You know, they're always owed the share capital. Anything extra owed to them for any reason is called a reserve. So it's anything extra owed to shareholders uh, over the share capital. Now, as you'll see as we work through the chapter and in the following lectures, um, you will see two other reasons why shareholders may be owed more than the share capital of 10,000. But the most obvious reason, which will always be there, is retained earnings. All the profit they've ever made, less all the dividends that they've ever paid. Okay, I'll leave that there. In the next lecture, I'll have a chat about dividends in a bit more detail.